So you may have heard about doing a fecal transplant. Yes, I said that. Putting somebody else's poo in your colon as a possible treatment for IBS. Well, in this video today, I will talk to you about what is a fecal transplant, how do we do it, what are the true indications for a fecal transplant, and my recommendation about whether you should do a fecal transplant for IBS. Guys, literally, let's talk about food. Hey guys, Dr. Islam here, your poop guru, coming here to give you the best tips and tricks to help out with your gut health. Don't forget to smash that like button. Fecal transplant, oh my gosh, that is crazy. But yes, this actually does happen. A fecal transplant can be an option for a lot of medical conditions that are out there. And what we're actually doing is yes, literally what it says, we are putting someone's stool inside your colon. How can this work? How can this be? Where did this come from? Let's talk about this in this video. So fecal transplants have been around for a long time. It was actually first reported in ancient China. Yes, someone actually reported in some tablet that someone instilled someone else's poo to help out with a medical condition. Do we know if it worked or not at that time? No one knows. There's no reports of that. But we do know there's evidence that back in ancient China, people were doing a fecal transplant. So what actually happens? We are literally putting someone else's stool inside a sick person in the hopes and the dreams and the dreams. We're not dreaming about this. No way. But in the hopes of actually curing somebody's gut issues or other issues that could be going on. The whole idea is that this is like a super probiotic in which we're changing the gut microbiome and by doing that we're affecting the condition that we're hoping to treat. So what exactly causes a change in the gut microbiome? You may see a lot of things on the news, social media, maybe on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, maybe even TikTok about what is the microbiome. But the microbiome is this whole collection of bacteria going on inside your gut, having an interaction between your body, your gut microbiome, what you're eating, what you're pooping, and this can affect a lot of different conditions inside your body, both inside the GI tract and actually outside the GI tract. And there are a number of things that have been shown to affect the gut microbiome. One of them is antibiotics. If you take antibiotics, especially if you take antibiotics early or necessarily, this seems to cause a good change in the gut microbiome. Living on a farm, yes, living with other animals on the farm actually does change your gut microbiome. There's a distinct difference between people who lived on the farm versus those who live in the city in terms of their gut microbiome. There are actually people who research your stool, look through it, and see which bacteria is growing in there and which one isn't. Man. Oh, don't give me that job. That sounds stinky, no way. Also, how you deliver can actually change your gut microbiome. There's a difference between vaginal birth versus a cesarean birth in terms of what can go into your gut microbiome and your oral mucosa. If you're breastfed or not, this can make a difference in your gut microbiome as well. How we sleep not only can affect the gut microbiome, but the gut microbiome actually can affect our circadian rhythm. That's weird, but yes, stuff inside your gut can really affect how you sleep and how often you sleep. Then lastly, we know for a fact that what you eat, yes guys, the crap that you're eating, or maybe not eating, hopefully not, is going to affect what's going on inside your gut. When you look at the research between people who have traveled or immigrated from other places into the United States or into a Western environment, the gut microbiome changes into a more of a Western gut microbiome. And this can actually be a cause for a lot of the gut issues and GI issues that we have here in the West. When you have more of a Western diet, there's less diversity of the gut microbiome and we think that that can actually play a role in why we're having more gut issues here in the West. But let's talk about fecal transplant. Yes! Now we're getting to the meat of the matter. How do we actually do this? So there is a national donor bank. Yes, people actually donate their stool to science. But this donor bank screens all of the stools for a lot of different viruses to make sure that we can give you the safe stool that's out there. They check for things like hepatitis, HIV, and other viruses or bacteria that can be transferred in the stool. So if we need a fecal transplant, we contact the center. Hey, ring, 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 ring. Fecal Transplant Center, yes, I'm Dr. Islam and I need some poo to help out with my patient. Coming right up, sir. And that stool comes all the way to where we're at and what we do is that we actually have 
our patient perform a bowel prep. So you have to do a bowel prep like you would for a colonoscopy. We put them to sleep and we use a very small camera and we search stool all throughout the colon. And the whole point is to change the gut microbiome to hopefully change the gut flora and by doing that we can hopefully change some diseases that are going on. This is me actually performing a fecal transplant on somebody who had a medical condition that needed it. We are literally putting someone else's stool in the colon to help affect what is going on with their health. So there are two true indications that we know currently for a fecal transplant. One is C. difficile colitis and number two is ulcerative colitis though the second one ulcerative colitis, the indication is not as robust as it is for C. diff. So C. diff is a really bad diarrhea infection that's caused from antibiotics, maybe living in a nursing home, or from any number of different reasons. But what happens is that this bacteria goes into your colon and vastly overwhelms the normal gut microbiome. And the effect of that is to produce a toxin that can cause severe diarrhea. And this diarrhea is bad, it sucks. It debilitates people, you see people wasting away, you see people losing their quality of life, and it can get to the point where people actually can die from C. diff. And so one of the more effective ways that we can treat C. diff, especially recurrent C. diff, is by a fecal transplant. And the cure rate is absolutely amazing. It's over 90%. Just imagine that. There's hardly anything in medicine that we can get over 90%. We have such a great successful rate with doing fecal transplant. This is one of the indications that we recommend to have somebody get this actual study done. Now the other one is ulcerative sort of colitis, number two. Now the, the indication is not as robust, but there's a very good study to suggest that those patients who have ulcerative sort of colitis may big may, may benefit from a fecal transplant. So let's talk about IBS. How the heck does it help to put someone else's poo in somebody who suffers from IBS? Well, what we think is going on in a number of IBS patients is that what could be driving the disease is a change in the gut microbiome. And that change can cause symptoms of bloating, nausea, distension, diarrhea, and even in a subset, constipation as well. And there's more and more research involving the gut microbiome when it comes to IBS. In fact, one of our treatments that we give for patients for IBS is a medication that changes the gut microbiome. And this is also why sometimes changing the diet for patients who have IBS can make them feel better. And so there have been some reports of some patients and some studies performing fecal transplants for their IBS in the hopes of changing their gut microbiome and by doing that they're hoping to get better. Now know that I stressed hope. So let's talk about the evidence now. What does the evidence say? So when you look at the clinical trials for those patients who have undergone a fecal transplant in a study trial for IBS, we can see that the data doesn't seem to be fitting there. There doesn't seem to be a good indication or a good recovery or a clear benefit for those patients who are wanting to do a fecal transplant for IBS. Now, we only have a few research studies that are there, but out of the few studies that we have, it, the evidence unfortunately is just not there. Now, you may see on the internet about people are doing these self-fecal transplants, they're instilling their own stool, they're giving themselves their own enemas as a fecal transplant. Let me tell you exactly why this is not the thing to do. And if you're doing this or you're looking into doing this, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you stop, don't do this because there is some risk with that. Number one is that there are risks for patients to actually tear their colon by giving themselves either a fecal transplant enema or maybe sticking a tube up the rectum or doing some sort of fecal transplant. Listen, if you have IBS, I can understand why you're trying to search for treatments because it can be a very debilitating disease. But let me tell you what's worse than that. Tearing your colon, having a hole in your colon. Absolutely that's worse. That's an emergent surgery. You don't want to get that done. And so there have been plenty of reports of having that as a side effect or as a consequence of a self fecal transplant. But also number two, you may be infecting yourself with something worse. I can guarantee you that that stool that you're getting has not been screened appropriately. You may be getting a worse bacteria infection. You may be getting something like HIV, hepatitis, or some other illness that you're not checking for. It doesn't matter if that donor thinks that they're clean or not. There's no way that you can check their stool. This is why we have only one company 
in the United States that we currently use for a fecal transplant because we want to make sure we get the best stool for you. So my recommendation is to not pursue this option. Find better ways to help treat your IBS. I have a lot of videos on IBS. In addition, I have a course, I'll put a link right here, on how you can treat your IBS, no stress with IBS. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in more videos on how you can treat your IBS, click over here. Or if you are wondering the seven worst things that you are doing for your health, click right here. My question of the day for you guys, have you known somebody who's had a fecal transplant and did it work? Comment down below, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. But guys, stay happy and stay healthy. Gotta make sure the hair is good, man. You gotta get the hair good. Sweet, all right, all right. So for those of you guys who are joining for the first time, my, my name is Khalid. So for those of you guys who are joining for the first time, I'm Dr. Islam, your poop guru and GI doctor. My passion is to give you tips and tricks to help out with your health. Guys, I'm Dr. Islam, your poop guru, and my passion is to give you tips and tricks to help out with your health. Don't forget to subscribe. God. Hey guys, Dr. Islam here, your poop guru. Coming here to give you some. Golly. God, ah. Is this whole collection of gut going. Gut. God. And that can actually be. And this and this and I can get poo in your stool. No. I can get poo in your doo doo. I can get doo doo to clear your poo poo with a fecal transplant too? Oh god, it's terrible. Have you guys heard about a fecal transplant? Are there questions that you have about this particular? So my question of the day for you guys, have you heard about a fecal transplant or do you have actually... All right.